which is a great decision to make okay it's a decision that we all should be making what Hi guys, my name is Andy Samujapilo and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so, so, so much for your support. And if you are new here, I really do hope you like the content and that you consider staying. We talk about money, we talk about adulting in general, because we just want to do better at this life thing, you know, and make well-informed decisions. So first things first, how are you guys doing? Um, it's been a rough past week. And I really hope you guys are doing good um, emotionally, physically, financially, as far as possible. I really do hope that you're doing okay. So in today's video, I decided to do um, a video on a requested topic. So basically, in case you didn't know, um, you can send me video requests on things that you'd like me to speak about on the channel, questions that you have preferably you can do this in the comment section i know you guys have been shy but um it, you commenting on the videos really does help with my engagement levels so you can send the feedback there and the questions and video requests etc alternatively you can send me an inbox or an email right so this individual um in particular sent me an email and said hi sis andy so uh, you know, it's the sis Andy Swa for me <laughs> that really caught me. But she sent me a, an email and said, hi, sis Andy Swa, is there a difference between a personal loan and a credit card? And if there is, what are some of those differences? And um, how would you know which option is best suited for you? So I think this is a good part to basically remind you guys um, that none of my videos constitute financial advice if you are looking for financial advice please contact someone who is registered with the fsca and they would be able to assist you right so in in saying that what i'm trying to say is that i can't tell you which option is best for you or which option is better because a lot of decisions specifically when it comes to finances will always be specific to your circumstances at the time right so that's why it's important to look at your situation in isolation however the first part of the question really caught my attention in the sense that are these two options different? And um, if they are, what are some of these differences? And I think that's a conversation that we can have. So, guys, first and foremost, I really, really, really um, don't advocate for getting bad debt. Uh, bad debt is basically debt that you take on um, that does not increase your value or your net worth or your wealth in any way. So that would be like um, getting a loan or a credit card or anything to that factor that does not improve your wealth overall, okay? So there's like clothing accounts, um, taking a loan and you can't really remember what you did with it or taking a loan to borrow someone or something like that, right? So that would be that would constitute as bad debt. And then better debt, um, I could like to call it better debt, but some people call it um, good debt, would be something like car finance or home loan or things like that where you've borrowed money, yes, but you also have like an asset to show um, for that specific amount of money that you have. So that is in instances like buying a home or a car, etc. So I don't advocate for getting bad debt. I really try and encourage people, especially when they're in the tight spot to, you know, look at your save, uh, your emergency fund if you've been building one, which is very important. Um, you get, you know, short term savings that you can access that you've been saving for other maybe short term goals that you can use when you're in a tight spot. Uh, look at um, relooking your budget and making some sacrifices, you know. Like try as much, look, borrow money from someone you know, you know, a family member that you trust that's not going to charge you interest. Just try and explore all the options before you have to go the route where you will pay interest, right? That's what I usually say. But sometimes you're in a tight spot, you don't have um, options or you just want to explore an opportunity that's going to have great returns. So regardless of the circumstances, right, you may find yourself in a position where you need to um, access credit and you need to get some debt, okay? So I thought it was important for us to look at what are these differences between the two options and how do they work? So what's important for us to know is that every individual is different. We all have different credit profiles. We always have different, we all have different uh, credit scores, you know, and all of those things do play a huge fact, uh, factor in um, the amount of interest that you end up paying, right? Or the amount of interest that you do get 
um, credit on. So it's important to note that it's not a one size fits all type of situation and everybody is different. But what I wanted to look at is um, the overall general differences that are there, regardless of the financial service provider or the bank that you are using, etc. Because I mean, those can also, um, those being different can also like, lead to differences in your credit as well but the things that we're going to look at are very general and there are some of the overall differences right and the first one is interest which is very important to consider when you are getting debt and how it's calculated remember we're not talking about how much interest but we're talking about the how like how does the interest work between these two options so firstly on the personal loan interest is calculated up front right so you would get um, a personal loan amount, of example, 50,000 Rand, and then um, interest would be calculated on this 50,000 Rand and on the repayment period that you are going to, um, the payment period that you are going to use. And then you would have a specific amount of interest added to the loan that you have taken. And this would be calculated up front, right? So in some cases, especially when you have like a banking app with the bank that, um, has given you the personal loan, you'll notice that you borrowed 20,000 Rand, but on your app, you see an amount much higher than 20,000 Rand that also accommodates the interest because it's already added in there. Now, with your credit card, interest is calculated on the debit balance, right? It's calculated on how much you owe when they do that interest run. Let's assume it's monthly. So you have a credit card and you've been allocated 50,000 Rand as your limit, meaning that you can take up to 50,000 Rand we can spend up to 50,000 Rand using that credit card facility. The amount of interest will be calculated on how much you owe, let's say, um, on a monthly basis. So if you use 10,000 Rand of that 50,000 Rand, interest will be calculated on that. If you max it out, interest will also be calculated on the maxed out amount. So what's also important to note is the fact that you get approximately 45 days up to 55 days interest free on your credit card. And what that means is that if you use um, 10,000 Rand of your credit card limit and then you paid back before the end of the month and you used it in that month, it means that you fall within the 55 days interest free period, which means that you don't get paid. Um, you don't get charged any interest. Remember that there is, this is different from the personal loan because on the personal loan, interest was charged up front, right? So that's another difference. Now, in most cases, you would find that the credit card, um, although it has this interest-free period, will sometimes or in most cases have a higher interest rate than the personal loan. Now, remember that not it's not a one size fits all. So this may not apply to you, but I'm just saying generally the interest, um, the credit card would have a higher interest than the personal loan, right? And this is why you find that um, sometimes when a person wants like an immediate cash inject injection that they'll be able to pay off sooner, they go the credit card route. And when they want a large lump sum that they want um, for a longer period, then they would go the, the personal loan um, route because it has lower interest. Um, but even though it is obviously for a longer period. Number two, let's talk about the actual monthly um, repayments and how they work. So with the personal loan, you would have um, a personal loan amount that's allocated to you or given to you, and then you would have monthly repayments. Now, one of the main differences with the personal loan option is that in most cases, the amount is fixed, right? You have a fixed amount that you are paying off for the amount that has been given to you that does not fluctuate. But on the credit card um, end, because you are being charged um, monthly premiums that are based on how much you've actually used of the credit card, right? So this month you use 10,000 Rand and then you pay off a thousand Rand. Now you've got 9,000 Rand owing. That is less than the initial 10,000 Rand, which means that your monthly repayments will be reduced based on that amount, right? So you'll see with the credit card that the monthly repayments can actually fluctuate and they are variable. Now, this is where it gets a bit complicated because vice versa, if you use and max out your credit card this month, but you only used half last month, it means that your monthly minimum repayment will increase drastically. So that can also work against you and your budget. If you like having a stable budget, which we all should, it means that as you use your credit card, your budget will also get affected based on the changing monthly um, repayments that you are paying. So credit card, monthly repayments fluctuating. Whereas with the personal loan, it's more of a fixed repayment on a monthly basis, right? Now let's talk about flexibility, okay? So with regards to the personal loan, 
If you decide that this 50,000 Rand that you've been allocated is not enough and you need more money, you would have to take another personal loan, right? Which obviously I wouldn't advise that you do, but you'd have to do another application with another personal loan. Remember that this goes on your credit record and everything else. And then um, you would get that loan. Whereas with the credit card, it is a type of um, revolving loan, what we call a revolving loan, meaning that the amount doesn't stay the same. It actually changes in the sense that with the credit card, um, you can actually pay back a thousand rand or nine thousand and then use a thousand rand, get yourself back to ten thousand. So you see the danger in that. The danger in that is that you can actually keep using what you've paid back. And that's how we find ourselves in what is called a debt spiral, where you are just paying off debt, but you keep getting yourself deeper in and you're paying off interest, but you keep say, getting yourself deeper in. And remember that with the interest rate, if like most instances, the interest rate is higher on your credit card. It means you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper because you keep using what you are paying back as opposed to paying back and then reducing your um, your minimum repayments, right? So in terms of flexibility, the credit card is revolving, which makes it more flexible in the sense that you have easy access to the credit should you need it. Whereas with the personal loan, you've been given what you've been given and there isn't much flexibility until unless you make a brand new application. So that means that the credit card does require a lot of discipline, okay? Otherwise, you may find yourself in a very tricky situation if you keep utilizing that maximum that's been given to you. And remember, everything goes to your credit record right and they are picking up you maximizing credit um they are picking up you paying monthly pay, um, repayments and then using that debt again as well and then the last thing is settlement okay which is also very important to remember now what if you come across hopefully fingers crossed um, come across a large sum of money and you now want to get yourself out of debt, which is a great decision to make. Okay. It's a decision that we all should be making. What then? Okay. What happens? And then, um, how does the process differ between the two options? So with the credit card, right? Like I said before, your credit card is probably on your banking app along with your other, um, along with your other accounts, if you have other accounts with that specific provider that has given you the credit card. So if you want to settle your credit card, it's a matter of transferring the balance amount, which is the amount owing at that point in time, into your credit card um, and then paying that off. Now, if interest hasn't run, then it obviously means that interest is going to run for that month and then you just pay off the interest, you settle the credit card and that's that. With the personal loan, it works a bit differently, okay? Because interest is calculated upfront. So this means that if you take a personal loan today and next month you decide that you don't want the personal loan anymore or you can afford to pay back um, the personal loan because interest has been charged upfront, you are kind of like, how can I put it, messing with the bank's budget, okay? Because they've calculated interest upfront and they're expecting to receive a certain amount of money from you. Um, with the total of money, with the total money that they've actually given to you. So when you now say you've changed your mind after a month, you're really messing with their budget. And because of that, you'll find that you'll still be liable from some, some amount of interest. Um, um, you, you can be allowed to, to settle early, but you will still be liable for interest. And in some cases, um, in, within a sh very short period, you will also be liable for penalties, right? For, um, canceling that, that personal loan because you're ultimately canceling it by paying it off early. There will be penalties and interest as well when you want to settle, right? Again, that's why in some instances you find that when people want a short cash injection that they can quickly pay off, they usually go the credit card route. But when someone wants a large lump sum over a very long period, meaning they don't see themselves settling early, then they would go the personal route. That's just um, some of the rationale that people use in making these decisions. But it's your circumstances, it's your finances, and it's your situation. It needs um, The best solution needs to be accustomed to where you are um, and what your needs are. So you'll see in some of these differences that there are three questions that come up that you need to be asking yourself when you source your solution. The first one is what are you using um, the loan for? Okay, what is the purpose? Is it to make an install purchase? Um, it's is it to like um, you know uh, have a quick in a cash injection because of an emergency that you'll you know or, or is it to invest um, in a long term business because you foresee way higher returns than the interest rate? What is the purpose? The second question to ask yourself is how long 
um, do you see yourself taking to pay this off? Is it a one month thing? Is it a three month thing? Is it a five years thing? Um, how long do you see yourself needing? Like, well, how much time do you need to actually pay this off? It's also an important question um, to ask yourself when you're trying to establish which one would be best suited for you from the two. The third and last question is, what is the deal on the table? So what are the interest rates and what is the repayment um, period? So like I said, this will be specific to you. These rates will be specific to your credit profile, right? So it's very important that you read the fine print and that you understand them so that you know what at interest am I being charged from the two options? What is the repayment period, you know, between the two options before you make a well-informed decision? So guys, you'll see that investing a bit of time to understand the options that you have, reading the fine print so you know what you're getting yourself into might cost you a little bit of time. In fact, will probably cost you a little bit of time because you're asking questions, you're doing your research, you're reading these contracts, etc. But it may really save you a lot in interest in the long run um, by making sure that you don't make the wrong decision that doesn't really apply or fit into your need. I really hope that um, this video was helpful if you had these specific questions. If it was and you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing for personal finance and adulting content, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!